The original impulse behind the book was a recognition I've had that there are very many people who don't really enjoy what they do or perhaps even how they live, they don't enjoy the, the work they do and they sort of tolerate it, you know, they get through the week and they wait for the weekend. There's a lot of evidence of that by the way, a lot of studies have shown that there's massive disengagement at the workplace and yet I also meet people who love what they do and they couldn't really imagine doing anything else. If you said to them, why don't you do something else for, for a change, they really wouldn't know what you meant. They'd say, but this isn't you know, what I do, it's, it's who I am. And they, they could be veterinarians, pathologists, they could be dancers, musicians, they could be teachers, homemakers, you, you name it. If you can think of a human activity or occupation, there'll be people who love it and live for it and others who couldn't bear it. So I was just always intrigued by the difference between these two ways of being and the difference it makes. I think it has really considerable implications. It, it has implications uh, that are social in character. You know, if, if we have uh, communities where large tranches of the population are simply detached, disengaged, uninterested, of course it has big consequences. If people are disengaged at work, it, it has large consequences. Now I'm not suggesting for a minute that if everybody finds their element, it'll solve every social problem we face, but I'm certainly saying it would help. And my long-term conviction has always been that we all have deep talents and uh, the potential for engagement and we should explore it. I have fallen into using the phrase, the other climate crisis, and uh, I, th I think it has a resonance. I, what I mean by it is that we, we've become used to the fact now, at least I hope we have, that there's a crisis in the world's natural resources. But I also think there is a crisis in our human resources and how we use them. And, and one of the themes of the book is to make an analogy between the natural world and, and the way our lives operate. You know, we tend to think that we, you know, we persuade ourselves because we live in cities like New York uh, or uh, LA or wherever, that we're somehow independent of nature and of course we're not. We're organic creatures, we live and we die and we, uh, we're, we're subject to the, own season, the seasons of our own lives and just like the earth it seems to me, human resources are often buried deep beneath the surface. You can spend your whole life completely oblivious to some talent you may have because the opportunity never showed up for you to discover it or to develop it. So uh, that's the broad aim of the book is to uh, dig down more deeply into what it means to be in your element but also the book is really focused on providing some practical support, help and exercises and if that's a journey that you're interested in taking for yourself or for people you know and love, your children or people you work with then I hope you'll stay with us here on, on Big Think Mentor.